Good morning children. We proceed on to exercise 7.10. Objective type questions in the chapter Applications of Differential Calculus. Question number 1. The volume of a sphere is increasing in volume. The moment I read increase in volume at the rate. So this represents dv by dt. Volume increases at the rate. So this tells me dv by dt. The rate of change of radius. Rate of change of radius tells me dr by dt. This we need to find out. So this is question mark. When radius is half a centimeter, so this is R. My question is about volume of a sphere. Recall the formula V equals 4 by 3 pi R cube. These are rate problems. So differentiate with respect to T. V will become dV by dT. Keep 4 by 3 pi as coefficient. R cube, the formula is 3R square dr by dt. R cube becomes 3R square dr by dt. We can cancel this 3. Wherever R comes, I can put 1 by 2. Wherever dv by dt comes, I can put 3 pi. And so I can find out dr by dt. What is dv by dt? 3 pi. 4 pi r square is 1 by 2 the whole square. dr by dt. Cancelling pi on both the sides. As I simplify, 3 equals 4 into 1 by 2 the whole square is 1 by 4 dr by dt. Now we get dr by dt is 3. So option A is the right choice. Question number 2. A balloon rises straight up at 10 meters per second. An observer is 40 meters away from the spot where the balloon left the ground. Find the rate of change of balloon's angle of elevation. In radian per second, when the balloon is 30 meters above the ground. Let us consider the height of the balloon. The observer who is 40 meters away. And the height is 30 meters. So, consider this as a right angle triangle. Let theta be the angle of elevation. From here. I can use Pythagoras theorem which says OA square plus AB square is OB square. 40 square plus this height is given as 30 for a specified condition. So put 30 square equals OB square. As I simplify I get 1600 plus 900 which reduces to 2500. Square root as we take OB is 50. So I get OB equals 50. My question is about the angle of elevation. As I know 40 and 50. Let me write tan theta. Tan theta equals opposite by adjacent. That is H by 40. The balloon keeps moving. So H is the variable. As I cross multiply. H equals 40 tan theta. As we read the question. Balloon rises straight up. So this is dH by dt. The rate of the height. And. We are asked to find rate of change of balloons angle of elevation. The angle of elevation we have taken theta. 
the rate we need so it is d theta by dt so rate of change of angle of elevation is d theta by dt so let us differentiate h with respect to t h becomes dh by dt 40 as it is tan theta the derivative secant square theta d theta by dt as i look at the triangle what is secant theta secant theta is nothing but cos theta is adjacent by hypotenuse so secant theta is hypotenuse by adjacent that is 50 by 40 let us substitute all that we know dh by dt is 10 40 secant square theta is 50 by 40 the whole square into d theta by dt as i simplify d theta by dt equals here we can cancel one zero as i reciprocate it is 40 by 50 the whole square 50 by 40 goes to the left as 40 by 50 the whole square 4 in the numerator comes down as we simplify thousand and six hundred two thousand five hundred into one by four double zero i can cancel four gets cancelled by four so my answer is four by twenty five that is option two which is the right choice question number three the position of a particle Moving along a horizontal line at any time t is 3t square minus 2t minus 8. The time at which the particle is at rest. The particle is at rest implies velocity must become 0. So find the velocity that is differentiate yes with respect to t. 3 into t square becomes 2t minus 2 into t becomes 1 constant becomes 0 so it is 6t minus 2 particle is at rest implies velocity is 0 if i substitute velocity as 0 we get 6t minus 2 equal to 0 or 60 equals 2 t equals 2 by 6 that is 1 by 3 so option 2 is the right choice question number 4 a stone is thrown up vertically so when i throw something vertically as the velocity becomes zero it will start falling down so the height it reaches is given by x is equal to 80 t minus 16 t square the question is the stone reaches maximum height so when the velocity becomes zero the stone falls down velocity is nothing but dx by dt as we differentiate a t into t becomes 1 minus 16 into t square becomes 2 t so we get 80 minus 32 t for maximum height the velocity should become zero or i get 80 minus 32 t is zero or minus 32 t equals minus 80 t is equal to minus 80 by minus 32 as we simplify using 16 table it is 5 by 2 or we say 2.5 my question is time t i get t equals 2.5 so option b is the right choice question number 5 find the point on the curve at which y coordinate changes y 
changes. So Y changes tells me dy by dt. A times as fast as x coordinate. So as fast as again the rate of change of x. So it is dx by dt. They have given dy by dt is a times dx by dt. The given curve is 6y equals x cube plus 2. As I differentiate with respect to t, 6 into y becomes dy by dt. x cube becomes 3x square. x becomes dx by dt. 2 is a constant that becomes 0. Wherever dy by dt comes, I can substitute a times dx by dt. 6 into a times dx by dt equals 3x square dx by dt. As we cancel dx by dt, we get 3x square is 6 into 8 or x square equals 6 into 8 divided by 3 as we cancel it is 16. x square is 16 gives us x is equal to plus r minus 4. As I substitute 4, I get 6y equals if x is 4, 6y equals 4 q plus 2. Or it is 6y equals 64 plus 2. 6y is 66 or y equals 11. So one answer is 4, 11. If I put x is minus 4, I get 6y is minus 4 the whole cube that is minus 64 plus 2. But this answer is not given here. So the right option is 4, 11 that is A. Question number 6. The abscissa of the point on the curve f of x equals root of 8 minus 2x. At which the slope of the tangent. Whenever they give you slope of the tangent it is nothing but f dash of x. So f dash of x is minus 0 0.25 we need to find the value of x abscissa tells us x value slope tells us f dash of x that is given slope of the tangent is nothing but f dash of x as we are given f of x let us differentiate as i differentiate f with respect to x f of x becomes f dash of x. We recall the formula root becomes 1 by 2 root. So root of 8 minus 2x becomes 1 by 2 root of 8 minus 2x into. Hide the square root. 8 becomes 0. Forget it. Minus 2x becomes minus 2. As we cancel 2 and 2. Let me substitute this value. So f dash we arrive at minus 1 by root of 8 minus 2x minus 0 0.25. I can cancel minus symbol 1 by root of 8 minus 2x. 0.25 can be rewritten as 25 by 100 which I can cancel which is 1 by 4. As I square on both the sides, we get 1 by 8 minus 2x is 1 by 16. Comparing the denominator, we get 8 minus 2x is 16. Minus 2x equals 16 minus 8 or it is 8. x is equal to 8 by minus 2 that is minus 4. Option B is the right choice. Question number 7. The slope of the line normal to the curve f of x is 2 cos 4x. At x is equal to pi by 12, we need to find out. 
the question is slope of normal we remember slope of tangent is f dash of x at the point x is equal to pi by 12 if i want slope of normal it is minus reciprocal so let us find out f dash of x f of x is 2 cos 4x f dash of x is 2 cos 4x becomes minus sine 4x into 4x becomes 4 remember cos becomes minus sine hide cos 4x becomes 4 or i will say minus 8 sine 4x at the point x is equal to pi by 12 it is minus 8 sine 4 into pi by 12 or if i cancel it is pi by 3 we remember sine pi by 3 is root 3 by 2 sine pi by 3 the value is root 3 by 2 and there is minus 8 as i cancel it is minus 4 root 3 which is slope of the tangent my question is slope of normal so minus reciprocal so we get minus 1 by minus 4 root 3 or it is simply 1 by 4 root 3 as we know root 3 is not allowed in the denominator multiply and divide by root 3 we get root 3 by root 3 into root 3 3 3 fours are 12 so the right choice is root 3 by 12 and it is option c question number 8 the tangent to the curve y square minus xy plus 9 equals 0 is vertical whenever the tangent is vertical we say y dash is infinity as we differentiate the given curve with respect to x y square becomes 2y y dash minus it is in product keep x y becomes y dash keep y x becomes 1 plus 9 being constant becomes 0 RHS is also 0. As I simplify, it is 2y y dash minus x y dash minus y equals 0. Or in these two, y dash is common. As I take it, it is 2y minus x. Bringing y to the other side, it is plus y. So what is y dash from here? It is y by 2y minus x. My question is tangent is vertical. That is y dash will be infinity. Infinity tells me denominator will be 0. So what is denominator? It is 2y minus x that is 0. Or if I simplify it is 2y equal to x. Or I can simply say x is equal to 2y. Options are given for y. So we need to find y. Wherever x comes. Let us put 2y in the equation. Wherever x comes. Let us put 2y. So y square as it is. Minus x will be 2y. Into y. Plus 9 equals 0. Or I get y square minus 2y square plus 9 equals 0. Minus y square equals minus 9. Cancelling y equals plus or minus 3. Option D is the right choice. Question number 9, angle between y square equals x and x square equals y at the origin. We know y square equal to x is a parabola opening right with a vertex 0, 0. x square equal to y is a parabola opening up 
with a vertex at 0, 0. So, both the curves are passing through the origin. The question is angle between the curves at the origin. Angle between the curves is nothing but angle between the tangents. At the origin, for y square equal to x, the green curve, y axis is the tangent. At the origin, for x square equal to y, x axis is the tangent. So, angle between the tangents is angle between x axis and y axis. x axis and y axis obviously has the angle pi by 2. So, the right option is C that is pi by 2. Question number 10. What is the value of the limit? x tends to 0 cortex minus 1 by x. As we directly put x 0, cot 0 is infinity, 1 by 0 is infinity, infinity minus infinity is indeterminate. So, let us simplify to apply hospital's rule. Limit x tends to 0. Cortex can be written as cos x by sin x minus 1 by x. As I take LCM, it is limit x tends to 0, x into sin x, cross multiplying, x into cos x minus sin x. When I apply 0 directly, it is infinity minus infinity, that is indeterminate. And now, again I put 0 it becomes 0 by 0 which is still indeterminate. So, we are going to apply hospital's rule. As I apply the rule, let me remember. Differentiate the numerator separately and differentiate the denominator separately. x into cos x, it's a product. Keep x cos x becomes minus sin x plus keep cos x x becomes 1 keep the first term differentiate the second term plus keep the second term differentiate the first term minus sin x becomes cos x divided by again the denominator it is in product keep x sin x becomes cos x plus keep sin x x becomes 1. As we simplify, cos x minus cos x gets cancelled. We are just left with limit x tends to 0 minus x sin x divided by x cos x plus sin x. As I put 0, it is 0 by 0 again it is indeterminate. So, let us apply hospital's rule again. So, applying hospital's rule differentiate the numerator limit x tends to 0 keep minus x sin x becomes cos x keep minus sin x x becomes 1 denominator Keep x, cos x becomes minus sin x plus keep cos x, x becomes 1 plus sin x becomes cos x. As I apply, x tends to 0. 0 into anything 0, sin 0 is 0, denominator x is 0 plus cos 0 is 1. Again, cos 0 is 1. So, I get 0 by 2, which is 0. So, the right option is A. As we simplify, we arrive at 0. Question number 11. The function sin power 4x plus cos power 4x is increasing. As we take f of x equals sin power 4x plus cos power 4x. Find out f dash of x. 
sin power 4 becomes 4 sin cubed x. Power 4 becomes 4 sin cubed x. Hide the power. Sin x becomes cos x. Same way, cos power 4x becomes 4 cos cubed x into hide the power cos x becomes minus sin x. In both the terms, let us take common term out. 4 is common. Sin power 1x. Cos power 1x is common. As I take, I am left with sin square x minus cos square x. As we know, for increasing or decreasing, f dash must be 0. So, putting f dash 0, we get 4 is not 0. So, either sin x is 0 or the second term cos x is 0 or sin square x minus cos square x is 0. As I simplify, sin x 0 gives me x is equal to 0. Cos x 0 gives me x is equal to pi by 2. The question does not go beyond. So, we have one option which is pi by 2. The next option, sin square x equal to cos square x. Or I will say sin x equal to cos x. So that gives us x is equal to pi by 4. As I mark these in the interval. The interval is 0 to pi by 2. And we get pi by 4 in between. As I substitute some values in f of x. Let me check whether it is increasing or decreasing. Putting pi by 6. Putting pi by 6 which falls here. As I put pi by 6. Positive. Sin x positive. Cos x positive. But what about sin square minus cos square. As I substitute. 4 sin pi by 6 cos pi by 6 sin square pi by 6 minus cos square pi by 6. These things are positive here. Sin pi by 6 is half. Squaring gives me 1 by 4. Cos pi by 6 is root 3 by 2. Squaring gives me 3 by 4. But this is negative. So, negative tells me decreasing. But my question is to choose where the function is increasing. So, choose another point here. Say pi by 3. As I put pi by 3, I get 4 sin pi by 3 cos pi by 3 sin square pi by 3 minus cos square pi by 3. Positive. Cos pi by 3 is also positive. Sin square pi by 3. That is root 3 by 2. The whole square which is 3 by 4. Cos square pi by 3. Half the whole square which is 1 by 4. Now this is also positive. That tells me increasing. So out of the intervals we choose pi by 4 to pi by 2. It is increasing. So, option C is the right choice. Question number 14. The minimum value of the function modulus of 3 minus x plus 9. We know modulus of 3 minus x is not differentiable at x is equal to 3. General formula mod x minus a is not differentiable at a. So, here we get 3 minus x. So, it is not differentiable at 3. So, x is equal to 3 is a critical number. We do not have any other option. So, put x is equal to 3 in the given question to find the minimum value. 
when I substitute x as 3, 3 minus 3 plus 9. So, my answer is 9. Option D is the right. Question number 15. The maximum slope of the tangent to the curve. First of all, let me find out slope. Slope tells me it is dy by dx. Given y equals e power x sin x. Differentiating with respect to x. It is in product. Keep e power x sin x becomes cos x. Plus keep sin x e power x becomes e power x. This is slope so let us call it as m. m is e power x into cos x plus sin x. The question is to find maximum slope. That is we need to find the first derivative as well as the second derivative. What is the first derivative? Keep the first term. Differentiate the second term. Cos x becomes minus sin x plus sin x becomes cos x. Plus keep the second term. Cos x plus sin x into e power x becomes e power x. Keep e power x. Differentiate this bracket. Plus keep the bracket. Differentiate e power x. In both the terms, e power x is common. So, m dash is e power x into. We have minus sin x. We have plus sin x which gets cancelled. We have cos x plus cos x. That is 2 cos x. Minus sin plus sin cancels. Cos plus cos is 2 cos x. As I put the derivative to be 0, I get 2 e power x cos x equals 0. Obviously, 2 and e power x are not 0. So, cos x alone gives us the choice. Cos x 0 tells us x is equal to pi by 2 or 3 pi by 2. As we are given the interval 0 to 2 pi. These are the two options where cos x is becoming 0. Now we need to find out the second derivative to confirm the answer. Finding the double dash. Again it is two terms product. Keep 2 e power x. Cos x becomes minus sin x. Plus, keep 2 cos x. e power x becomes e power x. So, m double dash is 2 e power x common. I have minus sin x plus cos x. Substitute the term. Putting x is equal to pi by 2. m double dash is 2 e power x into that is e power pi by 2 minus sin pi by 2 plus cos pi by 2. We know cos pi by 2 0 sin pi by 2 is 1. There is minus symbol so it is minus 1. And m double dash is less than 0 when x is equal to pi by 2. And so that is Telling us m is maximum. When m is maximum, what is my choice? m to be maximum. So, m is maximum when x is equal to pi by 2. Option B is the right choice. Question number 16. The maximum value of the function x square e power minus 2x. Considering f of x as x square e power minus 2x. For the word maxima, let us find out the two derivatives. f dash of x is, there are two terms in product. Keep the first term, differentiate the second. e power minus 2x becomes e power minus 2x. Minus 2x becomes minus 2. Plus, keep the second term x square becomes 2x. Keep x square. 
differentiate e power minus 2x plus e power minus 2x differentiate x square. In both the terms, check out for common term that is 2 e power minus 2x. We are left with minus x square plus x. Making the first derivative to be 0, I get f dash of x equal to 0 implies. Obviously, 2 and e power will not become 0. I get minus x square plus x 0 or minus x into x minus 1 0. x 0 or x is equal to 1. The question says x greater than 0. So x greater than 0 implies I should not use x is equal to 0. So the only option is x is equal to 1. Put x is equal to 1 in the function because we have only one option. If needed, you can also find the second derivative. But here we are just left with one option. So just substitute. Put x is equal to 1. f of x is equal to 1 square e power minus 2 into 1. That is 1 by e square. Option C is the right choice. Question number 17. One of the closest points on the curve x square minus y square equals 4 to the point 6, 0. Let us find out distance. Consider the distance between x comma y, a general point, and 6 comma 0 as some distance d. So d equals root of x minus 6 the whole square plus y minus 0 the whole square. My question is closest point. So I want to find d to be minimum. So closest expects us to find out the minimum. d is minimum tells me d square is also minimum. So let me square and write it. d square equals x minus 6 the whole square plus y square. But this equation 1 gives us x square minus y square is 4 or x square minus 4 is y square. So in the place of y square in d square I can substitute x square minus 4. So what is d square? It is x minus 6 the whole square plus x square minus 4. As we need to find minimum, find out the derivative. So d square, let me call as some new variable say z. So z equals x minus 6 the whole square plus x square minus 4. As I find out the derivative, x minus 6 the whole square is 2 into x minus 6 plus x square becomes 2x, 4 constant becomes 0. z double dash 2 into x minus 6, x becomes 1, 6 being a constant becoming 0 plus 2x, 2 into 1. Obviously, 2 plus 2 is a positive quantity, declaring z is minimum. Let us find out the corresponding x value by putting z dash equals 0. 2 into x minus 6 plus 2x is 0. Dividing by 2, I get x minus 6 plus x 0. 2x is equal to 6 or x is equal to 3. Out of the four choice, x is equal to 3 comes here. So this must be the right choice. Anyway, let us confirm with y value also. y square equals x square minus 4 because it is the point on the given curve. So 
y square is 3 square minus 4, 9 minus 4 is 5. y equals plus r minus root 5. So, the right option x value 3, y value root 5 which is given here. So, option C is the right choice. Question number 18, the maximum product of two positive numbers. Product tells me P equals multiplying two positive numbers. So, X into Y. Call this as number 1. Given sum of the squares is 200. The two numbers as I square and add, I get 200. So, what is Y square from this? It is 200 minus x squared or what is y from here it is root of 200 minus x squared as i substitute y value p equals x into root of 200 minus x squared p is minimum tells us p square is also minimum like the previous problem let us square and write. P square is x square into 200 minus x square. When I find the derivative, I want P square derivative. Keep x square. 200 minus x square becomes 0 minus 2x. Plus, keep 200 minus x square x square derivative is 2x as we simplify minus 2x cube plus 2x into 200 400x minus 2x into x square 2x cube as we simplify we get p square derivative is 400x minus 4x cube P square derivative equal to 0 implies 400x minus 4x cube 0 or minus 4x common. If I take it out, it is x square minus 100 equal to 0. I am taking minus 4 out, x out. This is x squared. If I take minus 4 out, it becomes minus 100. x is also taken out. As we make it 0, we get x 0 or x square 100. x is equal to 0 or x is equal to 10. x is equal to 0 is not possible because we want two positive numbers. So, which is valid? x is equal to 10 is valid. y equals root of 200 minus x square. x is 10, so 200 minus 10 square is root of 100. y is also 10. My question is to find the maximum product of two positive numbers. So, product equals 10 into 10 that is 100. So, the right choice is A which is 100. Question number 20. The point of inflection of the curve y is equal to x minus 1 the whole cube is. To find the point of inflection, let us find out the derivative. y dash x minus 1 the whole cube becomes 3 into x minus 1 the whole square. Second derivative. 3 into x minus 1 the whole square becomes 2 into x minus 1 or y double dash is 6 into x minus 1. For point of inflection, y double dash must change the symbol. So, put y double dash equal to 0, we get 6 into x minus 1 0 or x is equal to 1. As we have the number line from minus infinity to plus infinity, at 1, we get y double dash 0. Below 1, I can put 0. 
above 1, I can put 2. When x is equal to 0, a y double dash is 6 into 0 minus 1, that is less than 0. When x is equal to 2, y double dash is 6 into 2 minus 1, that is greater than 0. So, it is less than 0 in the interval minus infinity to 1. It is greater than 0 in the interval 1 to infinity. Point of inflection is at x is equal to 1. My question is to find out the point. So, point of inflection, we know x value 1. Putting x 1 in y, which is 1 minus 1, the whole cube, which is 0. So, the answer is 1 comma 0 and the right choice is C. Shortcut to remember for point of inflection. Find the three derivatives if possible. For point of inflection, remember the condition y double dash is 0 and y triple dash is not equal to 0. Here as I find the derivative, y double dash is 0 if I put. I get 6 into x minus 1 equals 0 or x is equal to 1. Once I know x is 1, I can immediately put in y where it is 1 minus 1, the whole cube, which is 0. So, we get the answer 1 comma 0. So, instead of finding concavity, concave down, concave up, changes at 1, all that, you can also remember easy technique where y double dash is 0 and y triple dash is not equal to 0 whenever it exists.